Hey guys, forgive the disheveled look. You also may hear some music going on in the background. My dad is working in the library office that is downstairs near my room and he's just jamming, which is great happy for him. But welcome to another reading vlog, Re my first reading vlog for February. It is currently the 4th, yes, the 4th of February, Saturday. I actually haven't technically finished my last vlog of my tournament reads, and it's because I have one more clip to get to, and I'm hoping to just get to it in the next few hours. But today I have the day off, and I just have decided I really want to dedicate today to reading. I was going to film a video just in case I didn't get my vlog done for the tournament reads, but I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna make sure I get the vlog done for the tournament reads and that will be my filming. My filming will be finishing the last book on that, filming the last clip, and then I can edit and upload that later, which it's already over an hour long, so it's gonna be a fun one to edit for sure, but that's just the way it turned out. So anyway, like I said, I am having a full day of reading and I just wanted to be able to start with this vlog at the beginning of today so I can kind of give you my first thoughts of the day. I also have a little book haul and since I already did kind of a mini book haul in my other vlog. I wanted to kind of separate this one out, so I'm going to share those with you. Luckily, I did get several books, but only one of them is one that's being added to my physical TBR. The rest I've read before. They're just more collection editions than anything. Maybe I'll start with the book haul just so I can transition into my thoughts on why I'm dedicating today to reading my thoughts on my February reading and some of my stresses. So let's start with this book haul. This is from Barnes & Noble. Background, I, in passing, one of my coworkers mentioned that the local Barnes & Noble in the area where I work was going, not necessarily out of business, it sounds like maybe their lease or contract for the building, just something happened with it because they are intending to move. They don't know where to yet though. So they're like selling everything and it's probably gonna be a while before they find a lo new location. But they didn't say they're going necessarily out of business. It's just more a transition period. So I'm assuming that it was a lease issue. But because of that, they were having a 40% off sale and I just couldn't say no to that, particularly because this week at work has just been really stressful. We've been preparing for an inventory day. I work in retail and so we've been preparing for a couple days of inventory which means being one of the full-time supervisors I've had to do a lot and my manager has been AWOL a little bit this week partly because he was actually helping other nearby stores with their inventory so it's respectable it's understandable but he's also fallen sick and his he has twin babies that have been sick and stuff so he hasn't really been around all that much so it's a, a lot of it has fallen to me and the other full-time supervisor which is fine it's a lot of organization work and stuff and I enjoy that sort of thing, but it's just been very stressful. It's been very exhausting. And so I just, and yesterday was particularly exhausting. So after work, I was like, I was kind of going back and forth on whether I would go or not. But yeah, at the end of the day, I was like, no, I need to go because I just need to do something for me right now because I'm just so stressed out about everything that's happening. So that's what I ended up doing. Like I said, I only got one that adds to my physical TBR and it's one that I have wanted for like over a year now and I have never been able to find it at a used bookstore or even at Barnes & Noble. I've gone to Barnes & Noble a couple of times and have looked specifically for this book and they never have it. They only have the sequel and I want to read this book. So it was a bit of a struggle, but they had one copy out on the floor when I went and I was like I can't not get it like I have to get it and that book is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Do I need more Greek myth retellings? No I really don't. I am going in the next few weeks couple months I'm going to end up with nine that I haven't read yet. That's not even including the ones that I have read so do I need this? Not necessarily, but this one's from Perseus's perspective, and I recently read Song of Achilles and did enjoy it, but I did- one of my disappointments with it was that I didn't feel like Perseus was really focused on very much at all, and I felt like I wanted a little bit more from her character in that. Obviously, it was more a story focused on Patroclus and Achilles, so that's understandable, but I did want a little bit more with Perseus than what we got, and so I just really wanted this one so that I could read a book from Briseis's perspective. So that's why I got it. It's not honestly that long though. It's under 300 pages. So it didn't add that much to my TBR, 
But as I'll discuss in a moment, I still kind of made me stressed out about the situation. Next, let's get into the other books I got, all of which, like I said, are books that I've read or experienced in a way. They're, some of them are plays, so seen. So I don't feel like I'm adding to my TBR, but I wanted to collect some new things. So I have long wanted to have Shakespeare plays. I have my complete Shakespeare, which I love, but I've always wanted to be able to have like a shelf where I just have all of the plays separate and in ma matching editions. I just had to figure out what edition I wanted. And I think I finally decided because it's an edition that I've heard good things about and it's one I see everywhere. So I feel like it will be easy to collect all of them. So I decided to go with the Folger Shakespeare Library and they had five. I wanted the mass market paperback editions, not kind of the newer, bigger editions. They had a couple of those, but like I said, I want them all to match. So I went with the mass market paperback editions and I got five of them, all of which I have either read or seen, and I'll kind of mention which ones are which in a moment. So first of all, I got Twelfth Night, which I did see on stage. I have not personally read it yet, but I have seen it on stage, so it doesn't really count towards my TBR because my goal is to at least experience, either read or see all of Shakespeare's plays. Eventually I want to see all of them for sure and read all of them for sure, but my, I, my goal right now is just to get through all of them in one way or another. So yes, I got Twelfth Night, I got The Taming of the Shrew, which is probably my least favorite Shakespeare play that I've experienced so far, but I have seen it on stage and honestly it's been several years so I should revisit it pretty soon, but yeah, I have seen this on stage. Then I have The Tempest, which I have also seen on stage. I have not physically read it, but it was performed at Shakespeare Festival last year and I really, really liked it. I'm kind of surprised. It's the one I've probably thought about the most since seeing it, which is interesting because watching it, it wasn't necessarily one that stood out to me all that much while watching, but there was just something about the language and the storyline and characters that really like have lived rent free in my head. And yeah, I ended up really loving it. So, and then these last two I have just read, I have not seen performed. The first being Othello and then Macbeth, which Macbeth I really need to honestly reread very soon. I read it early on in my classics journey and I just, and I read it by myself. It wasn't in a class or anything. And I just feel like I don't really remember much about it. I don't feel like I fully appreciated it at the time. So I do need to revisit that one. But yes, I have those five out of, what, 32 Shakespeare plays that there are. I have five of them now in these editions, which is great. Um, and it was nice that it worked out that they were ones I have already read or seen, so it's not adding to my physical TBR. And then last but certainly not least, I got Bleak House by Charles Dickens. As many of you know, I have read this. I loved it. I love my copy that I have. I'm going to keep it forever because there's just this sentimental aspect to it, but I did really want a prettier copy to put on my favorite shelf and of course they had some cloth bound classics that were for sale during this huge sale. Not a lot. I'm pretty sure they must have had a, people just come in and take so many of them but they had Bleak House and I was like you know what I'm gonna get it because then I have a pretty copy of one of my favorite books and it just felt like a must. I honestly need to get a better copy of David Copperfield as well because the one I have is fine but it's not my favorite. So I don't necessarily need like a cloth bound edition of it, though I wouldn't mind. But in fact, maybe I will start getting cloth bound classics of all of my favorite Shakespeare books in particular. That could be really fun. And it was really extra exciting because I got all of those Shakespeare plays. The girl who helped me at the register, she was, she's a huge Shakespeare fan apparently. And she was saying that I'm only like the second person who's come in and bought a bunch of Shakespeare like that she's helped. And and I was like, oh yeah, I I definitely love Shakespeare. I'm super excited about it. And she was like, I'm gonna sneakily give you 50% off instead. So it was just 10% off additional from the 40%, but it was really kind. It was good book lovers, classic lovers moment. And yeah, so that was really exciting. Um, so yeah, I got 50% off all of those. What would usually be like, $80, $90 was like $40 for me. So definitely great win and like I said only one of them is an addition to my TBR. However, I uh, I 
have added too much to my TBR already this year because I have had two pre-orders come in that I have not read either of yet. I just bought that one. Full disclosure, I have two other books coming in the mail that I purchased that are Victorian classics by Anthony Trollope because I went down a thrift books rabbit hole and I just couldn't help myself. Plus I had two free books and I was tired of seeing the two free books there and I was almost at a third free book and I was like, I just need to use these. Like I just hate seeing this here knowing that I have the chance to get a free book and not doing it. So I still have one because it just added up to have one more free book, but I'm okay with having the one there for a while. I just was sick and tired of seeing the two there that's been there for a couple of months now and I haven't used and I'm like, I just... I have to. And because of that, I had to do it in two separate transactions because you can only use one free book per transaction. So I had to do two transactions and I'm just the type of person that I would rather buy a book than pay for shipping. And on thrift books, if you spend about $10, you get free shipping to the US. And so I had to do it, obviously. So both of those transactions had two books in it, but two of the books that I ordered are books that I actually already have. I just wanted to switch the edition I had it in. All of them were Anthony Trollope, I should say. There was The Warden and Barchester Towers, which are the two that I have, but I really want all of my Barsetshire Chronicles to match and then all of my Palitzer novels to match as far as the editions. And the ones I currently have for The Warden and Barchester Towers is one that I really like but it's out of print and it's kind of like it's not hard to find but it's hard to find if you're looking for specific books in that like if I'm looking for a whole series in that particular edition it's gonna take time and I just want to be able to like as I go along just buy the edition that I want it to be in so the one I have are like the mini like yellow spined like this like the stombi and sun this edition these old oxford world's classics with the yellow spines i have the warden and barchester towers in this but like i said it's just hard to make sure i can get all of the whole series in that edition so i decided to switch to just the normal white spined oxford world classics so i got the warden and barchester towers in that which i've read the warden already barchester towers i haven't but like i said it's not adding anything to my physical tbr really because i've i already have them i'm just switching editions but the other two are books that definitely are adding to my physical tbr and more pre-orders i'm going to have not this next week but starting the week after i'm going to have like four weeks straight where i'm going to be receiving pre-orders just one each week so it's not like i'm receiving a ton but one like four pre-orders are going to be coming in in the next month or so and i want to have read more than i've brought in this year so I need to pick up the pace a little bit on my reading. I'm feeling that pressure, which not in a bad way. Like I want to make it clear, like I'm not struggling with it. I really want to bring my physical TBR down. By the end of this year, I would love for it to be from like around 200 to like 150, which is still a lot, but it will at least show that I'm working my way through it. And then I'll continue to do that next year as well. But I also don't want to completely limit myself on buying books because like, as far as like not buying books at all, because I just like buying books. It brings me comfort. I just need some self-control. So, oh, on top of that, a book I'm going to mention in a second, I had to get the sequel for, so that's also going to come. So yeah, I have a lot coming in and I that means I need to start getting through a lot more. So like I said, today's going to be a full on reading day. First and foremost, I need to finish Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the last book I have to read for my tournaments vlog, which should be already up by the time you're seeing this. I have about 130 pages left, so it will take me like two to three hours to finish. And I'm going to do that this morning. I am going to finish this this morning so I can film my final clip for that vlog and be done with it. It will be great. So yes, I am going to be working on that. Once I finish that though, I want to dedicate the rest of the day to getting through A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. I don't know if I'll necessarily finish this. I would be happy to if I do, but really I just want to spend the rest of the day really focusing on reading this. And there's some Feb Regency sprints going on later today so I can watch the of course this isn't Feb Regency reading but it will be still fun to interact on there while I'm reading kind of have some company during my day of reading so anyway that's going to happen once I finish Assassin's Apprentice if by some miracle I finish that and have time and motivation to keep reading I think I'm going to start A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens I want to be able to read this throughout this next week and finish it I have already put in tabs 
to mark off what to read each day. It's about 50 pages that I'll be reading each day for seven days. So I wouldn't mind getting a head start on this. I was planning to start Monday, so whatever I read today would be going towards what I read on Monday, and yeah. So anyway, that's a possibility, but we'll see how it goes. The audiobook I'm currently listening to is The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. I am much farther than I was earlier when I made my February TBR. I am about 160 pages in, about to vol volume two. I'm not quite this far because in my physical book I usually just go to the end of the chapter I'm on when I'm marking where how far I am and I haven't actually finished that chapter yet so I'm almost to volume two and I am very much enjoying it more than I was to start with, which is great. We'll see if I'll continue to enjoy it. So that's my Feb Regency read currently. So I may discuss that in this vlog. That's where I'm at right now. And I will check in with you later in the day, probably as I continue to read. Okay, I wasn't necessarily planning to do an update right now, but I just felt like it was actually a good time to do a little update for reasons that we'll get into in a second. But I am getting closer to finishing Assassin's Apprentice. I only have five chapters and like 70 pages left, less than 70 pages left. So I haven't read a ton, but I'm getting there. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about my thoughts on this in this vlog because I will be discussing them in my other vlog. But I just, I love it so much. I love Fibs. I love this world. I love the writing style. And I just feel at home. I've teared up a couple times, even just in those, what, like 60 or so pages that I just read. So yes, loving it. I expect to finish it pretty quickly. But what I really wanted to come on here to show you is I am going to be participating in February agency sprints. I think I mentioned that in my last clip with Jennifer Brooks, Christy from Dostoevsky in, Sp in Space, Nat, I think is her name, from The Bookish Princess, and Tristan from Tristan and the Classics, I'm pretty sure. Sorry if I got any of your names wrong, but it's actually my first time, I think, ever live participating in sprints. Like, I've re-watched them later, but I just am never in a position to actually participate. And so I'm really excited that I actually am in a position where I can participate today. So even though I'm not reading Feb Regency stuff, I am excited to at least see them chatting, get involved in some of the discussions maybe a little bit, and yeah, it will just be real nice. So that's starting in about 10 minutes or so. I think I am going to continue with Assassin's Apprentice in the meantime, and hopefully will finish in the next hour or two is my goal, is my hope, so that I can start A Man Called Ove and potentially finish it today. I don't know if I should even be saying that because I can be just such a slow reader and I don't know how A Man Called Ove, how the reading's gonna go with that, but I just am really hoping that it goes well and I can get through two books today as opposed to one so that I can get through that physical TBR of mine and get it down. Oh my lord. I love this book so much. I love Fit so much. I just need the second one, but I don't have time to read the second one. I need to fit continue with my reading of The Cosmere as well. I'm gonna have major book hangover. So it is currently just after six and I haven't updated this vlog, so I thought I should probably do that. First things first, I did complete Assassin's Apprentice during the reading sprints and the emotions were all there. I It's been several hours since I finished this and I cannot stop thinking about it. Major book hangover, which makes me a little bit concerned about my feelings towards A Man Called Ove, but we'll see what happens. I, I'm already engaged enough. Well, we'll get into that in a moment. Like I said, I did already do a vlog for this, so I'm not going to go too much in depth on my feelings here, but I'll put a little clip from that other vlog in case you didn't see it or just needed a reminder of my reaction to this book. So yeah, suffice it to say it made me feel all the feels and I just, I need the second one immediately, but I also have so many other reading plans. So anyway, 
that happened. It's done. I did start A Man Called Ove by Frederick Machman. I am about 50 pages into it, so not very far, but I am enjoying it so far already. Um, I will say the only other books I've read by Fred Frederick Bachman were Bear Town and Us Against You, which is the sequel to Bear Town. And I think what stands out to me about those books is the amount of perspectives we get into and just insight into everybody's lives and their outlook on the world and everything. And so we just get to see how everybody is doing their best. And I feel like we're getting a similar thing here but it's just about one person. And so I'm a little bit worried that this type of story where it's just, it's not quite 400 pages, it's, let's see, not even 350, it's 337 pages. So not very long, but also kind of more on the medium length side. And it's really just focused on this one old man and his kind of experiences. So I'm a little worried it's going to feel drawn out with just a lot of him being grumpy in different scenarios. And then slowly over time, he becomes less grumpy with this family. But I'm hoping that I'll still enjoy my time with it, even if it doesn't necessarily become a new favorite, which maybe it will. Maybe I'll get through this and I'll be like, yes, I love this so much. Again, I'm hungover from Assassin's Apprentice, so I really don't know if this is the best time to read this because of that, but I feel like it's different enough that if it's really good and it really clicks with me, it will still click with me even despite Assassin's Apprentice. Will I finish it tonight? Probably not. I'll probably still have some of it left, but I think I'm just gonna keep this vlog going until I finish this, hopefully in the next couple of days. And then I'll just start the next vlog with A Tale of Two Cities, just cause that feels more fitting. But anyway, yes, I have started this and I look forward to continuing with it. I didn't really read all that long, to get to 50 pages so I think it is a quick read for me and it already has made me tear up so clearly it's having some level of emotional impact I just think that maybe the timing of it might have an impact like I'm worried I'm going to compare my feelings of this with my feelings towards Assassin's Apprentice or even with Beartown, um, which I guess is like fair to compare author's work to themselves. Which one do you prefer? And so far I would guess I probably will prefer Beartown, but who knows? Maybe this book will really surprise me. I'm hoping it does. I would love to have another favorite right towards the beginning of this year because so far I've done real well between Piranesi and Assassin's Apprentice and then also Crime and Punishment. Although the more I think about it, the less I'm sure Crime and Punishment would be on a favorites list. We'll have to see as time goes on. That one hasn't really stuck with me surprisingly as much as Piranesi and Assassin's Apprentice has. Like I haven't thought about it as much. Obviously Assassin's Apprentice had just finished, but I am already thinking about it more than I usually think about books. So I'm sure it will last with me but anyway all that to say we'll see how this ends up going and hopefully the timing of it doesn't ruin anything but because I've already gotten emotional while reading it and I'm already at least invested in the character of Ove I think I'll at least enjoy it and yeah we'll just we'll see how it goes I'll let you know I probably will chat with you once I get a good chunk of the way through maybe later tonight that's that will be my plan I'm gonna continue reading until later tonight and then once I'm kind of getting to a point where I think I might be going to bed that's when I will chat with you about my final thoughts for the day at least. I apologize if you can hear my brother. Hopefully it's not picking up on the audio but if it is I apologize but I have nowhere else to go to film this update and I really wanted to. So Man Called Ove, I am halfway through and I am really enjoying it, not as much as Assassin's Apprentice. It's not giving me that level, but I've definitely shed tears <laughs> reading this. Basically, I didn't realize this about this book. And I think I mentioned in my last clip that I was worried that it was going to start dragging because it was just this commercial old man. And I was worried it was going to be a bunch of him being grumpy and then him kind of lightening up with this 
new neighbor of his, but it actually is going on two different timelines. So we're following the present, which is that basic plot line that I just said, and we're also going back in the past and kind of watching him, his growing up experience, and just a bunch of experiences with humanity, and then him meeting his wife and their dynamic. And so it just, it's very well written to keep it engaging and interesting. I really think Ove as a character, I don't know how to feel about him 100% because I think there's a level obviously of him being ridiculous and overbearing and just way too intense about things in life. And it's one of those things where it bothers me not just because it's just annoying, but also it's clearly not making him happy. Like he's clearly a very unhappy person and his attitude about things is certainly not helping. But at the same time, as you're going back into his past, you kind of understand why he's become the way he is. He's gone through some really terrible experiences with other people just treating him like he can be walked all over and just quickly dismissing his needs and his humanity in order to gain money for themselves and so he has reached a point where he just wants the world to be right and to have people do the right thing because it's the right thing as opposed to seeking out riches and fame and notice and attention. I will say something I didn't totally expect from this book is that there's a lot of discussion of like suicidal ideation and fixation and so if that's something that's triggering for you be aware of that definitely going into this um but it's yeah it's a very moving book i would say at this point halfway through i would say i probably do still prefer bear town just because of the nature of it jumping between many different perspectives as opposed to following just really one but i am enjoying myself with this even though it's emotional and i'm still crying over it i feel like it's still just the contemporary nature of it is a bit of a good palate cleanser after Assassin's Apprentice. I am so hungover from that book still, but this, like, I'm still engaged in this. Like, it's not, I don't think that experience is ruining this experience like I thought it might, um, which is good. I actually, it's only 9.30, so I think I actually probably will be able to finish this by the end of the night. Like I think I can finish it in the next few hours. So I'm gonna try to do that. And then my last clip will be me finishing this and giving you my final thoughts. And that will be incredible because like I said at the beginning of this vlog, I really want to get my physical TBR down and I feel like I've kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit with some of my pre-orders and giving in in the past couple of days to a few book purchases. I just need to have more self-discipline. Granted, it's been over a month since I last purchased books like outside of pre-orders. So, I mean, I guess there's that. But I still, like, I want to wait until the end of April when I go on my trip to purchase books as opposed to purchasing them regularly over the next couple of months. So hopefully, like I said, I have like four weeks straight of receiving pre-orders so hopefully that will keep me busy enough and happy enough and content enough as far as books coming in and then we'll just try to keep strong and if I do have feel the need to do book purchases I'll need to try to focus in on books I've already read that maybe I want a different edition I kind of want a Barnes and Noble cloth bound edition of David Copperfield I don't know if I mentioned that already but I would really like that to match my edition of Bleak House I think it would be cool to have cloth bound editions of all of my favorite Dickens novels so I may do that if I end up feeling the draw to purchase more books and now I can always purchase more Shakespeare plays in the Folger Shakespearean library editions so that's great anyway yes that's all I'm going to say for this clip and my next clip should be me wrapping up with a man called Ove hopefully and it'll probably be at like midnight but that's okay i it's been a long time since i've stayed up super late reading i've stayed up super late doing other things but reading it's been a minute so yeah we'll see how that goes so it's after midnight so i'm going to try to keep this as quiet as possible so i don't wake anybody up but i did finish a man called ove by frederick bachman 
and it was a beautiful story as expected. Um, Frederick Bachman just has a way of describing like the relationships between people so beautifully and just showing how connected they are and gosh I'm trying not to cry again because definitely made me cry a lot. Yeah, I'm excited to see the film with Tom Hanks because I think he'll probably do a great job and I'm sure I'll be an emotional wreck watching it as much as I was, if not more, reading it. I also love that Frederick Bachman's really good at like not changing people too much in an unrealistic way. So for example, Ove, he's still himself in the end. Like he's not suddenly super happy and charismatic. The good things about him that you see throughout his past, when we're in his past, come back to him and that's the change that happens as opposed to him necessarily not still being kind of a curmudgeon old man, like he stays that way. He develops these relationships that bring him back to himself. I think I'm gonna give it four stars because I do feel like while it really touched me in a lot of ways and just had a great impact on me, there was nothing necessarily mind-blowing about this story like it was all very what you would expect from a story like this it was beautifully done but it wasn't like mind-boggling so yeah it was a great choice for this i'm glad i did get to finish it and that's gonna wrap up my weekend my saturday reading vlog let me know down below if you've read any of the books i've mentioned in this video your thoughts on them if there's any other books by frederick bachman that you would recommend besides bear town because in that series because I've already read it. I mean, except for the winners. I haven't read the last book yet, but I do intend to. So if there's any others that you think are particularly good that I should try, let me know. But I don't really have anything else to say other than that. So we're going to close this off. Again, thank you for watching and 